Welcome back to Triangles of Neck. So today's topic is continuation of anterior triangle that is the muscular triangle. And we would also learn about the answer cervicalis which is actually a content of carotid triangle. And uh, we are studying answer cervicalis here at this point because most of the muscles which are forming the muscular triangle are supplied by answer cervicalis. So let's begin. So muscular triangle. Muscular triangle is here which is made up of infrahyoid muscles and it contains only muscles. So you can see midline it is formed by an imaginary line from the hyoid bone down till the supra sternal notch. So this midline form median line forms the anterior boundary and posteriorly and above that is the posterior superiorly from the hyoid bone. It is formed by, uh, by a muscle here which is called as superior belly of homohyoid which attaches to the hyoid bone. So this is the postero superior boundary. Postero inferior boundary it is formed by the sternocleidomastoid which forms the base of the triangle. So this is the muscular triangle. So let's see the contents. As we can see there are several muscles which are a strap like muscles present below the hyoid bone called as infrahyoid muscles forms a content of this triangle. So the strap muscles are arranged in two layers. The first layer is sternohyoid, sternohyoid that is the from sternum to the hyoid bone and omohyoid muscle that is the superior belly of omohyoid. Here you can see on the other side superior belly of omohyoid. So sternohyoid from the sternum to the hyoid and superior belly of homohyoid. These two muscles forms the superficial layer deep to which means after removing these two layers you can see the other side which is formed by the sternothyroid means from the sternum to the thyroid cartilage. This blue one is the thyroid cartilage and from the oblique line of thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone which is called as thyrohyoid. So these two muscles forms the deeper layer. So totally there are four muscles. Let's, let us understand individual muscle little more in detail that is the sternohyoid as I said it gets origin from the sternum that is inner surface and it also gets origin from the clavicle and gets inserted to the hyoid bone uh, that is the body of the hyoid bone. And next the nerve supply of sternohyoid most of the infrahyoid muscles they are supplied by ansa cervicalis which I am going to explain little later. Then uh, the action of uh, sternohyoid, it depresses the hyoid bone. It pulls the hyoid bone down. Next to superior belly of homohyoid. If you see homohyoid, it has got two bellies. Superior belly and inferior belly of homohyoid. And both the bellies are connected by an intermediate tendon. And this intermediate tendon lies deep to sternocleidomastoid. So here the sternocleidomastoid is removed exposing the superior belly and inferior belly of homohyoid. Inferior belly is actually a part of posterior triangle of neck which divides the posterior triangle into two triangles again. Whereas the superior belly here which is a part of anterior triangle and it divides the anterior triangle further into anteriorly muscular and posterior to it is the carotid triangle. So this is the superior belly of homohyoid. We can see one end it attaches to the intermediate tendon, the other end attaches to the hyoid bone. It inserts into the hyoid bone. So origin is from the intermediate tendon, inserts into the lower border of hyoid bone. Nerve supply again answer cervicalis. So it also helps in the depression of hyoid bone. Next is sternothyroid. Sternothyroid is a second layer muscle which gets origin from the inner surface of sternum that is manubrium upper part of the sternum and inserts into the oblique line of thyroid cartilage and it is also supplied by an ansa cervicalis and uh, it also causes the depression of hyoid bone. Next thyrohyoid. Thyrohyoid from the oblique line of thyroid to the hyoid bone. So it gets origin from the thyroid and inserts into the hyoid bone. It is a little different in its nerve supply. It is supplied by C1 fibers which are running along the hypoglossal nerve. 
and action of this muscle helps in the elevation of thyroid cartilage. So let us talk about the ansa cervicalis which is uh, supplying several infrahyoid muscles especially. So you can see here ansa cervicalis is formed by C1, C2, C3 and this is the 12th cranial nerve hypoglossal nerve. We can see the C1 nerve which is joining the hypoglossal nerve and the fibers of the C1 runs along with the hypoglossal nerve so, and this continues further to form descendant hypoglossy. This is called descendant hypoglossy and C2, C3 continues and joins here to form the descendant cervicalis and this loop is called as ansa. In anatomy loop is called ansa. So ansa cervicalis is the loop which is present within the anterior wall of carotid sheath. So please note down. It is present within the anterior wall of carotid sheath within the carotid triangle. It is a content of carotid triangle, not muscular triangle. And it is present within the anterior wall of carotid sheath. So let's see the nerve supply of ansa cervicalis. The hypoglossal nerve, we can see it continues further and it divides to form a branches to the thyrohyoid, thyrohyoid muscle and genohyoid. So these two muscles are not supplied by ansa cervicalis, they are supplied by C1 fibers via the hypoglossal nerve. So that's what we were seeing, thyrohyoid is supplied by C1 fibers which are running along with the hypoglossal. And remaining muscles like you can see the loop of ansa here, it is supplying superior belly of omohyoid, then st uh, sternohyoid, then sternothyroid. And we can also appreciate here in this image lingual nerve which is the sensory nerve supplying anterior two thirds of the tongue and we can see the hypoglossal nerve which is a motor nerve supplying most of the muscles of tongue. So if you see the ansa cervicalis this is a schematic image for us to understand better. So C1 is along with the hypoglossal nerve to supply genohyoid and thyroid. So genohyoid and thyroid are from C1 but they are, uh, the nerve runs along with the hypoglossal nerve. And this is the descendant hypoglossy which is called superior root. And inferior root is formed by descendant cervicalis which is from C to C3 which forms descendant cervicalis. And we can see what are the muscles it is supplying. Inferior belly of homohyoid. Then the loop supplies sternothyroid, sternothyroid and superior belly of homohyoid. So all the infrahyoid except thyrohyoid, all our infrahyoid muscles are supplied by ansa cervicalis. So here we can see a table for us to understand. So sternohyoid, we saw it is supplied by ansa. Omohyoid, both superior belly, inferior belly, they are supplied by ansa cervicalis. Sternothyroid is also supplied by ansa cervicalis. Thyroid is exceptional. It is supplied by C1. It is supplied by C1 fibers. Maybe sometimes C2, mainly C1 fibers. Which also contributes in the formation of ansa but not ansa. It is by C1. Then anterior belly of digastric. Now about suprahyoid muscles. Anterior belly, posterior belly. These are the suprahyoid muscles. Anterior belly developmentally is from the first pharyngeal arch. So it is supplied by mandibular nerve, branch of trigeminal nerve. Posterior belly, developmentally it is from second pharyngeal arch. So it is supplied by facial nerve. Mylohyoid, it is uh, from the, again from the first pharyngeal arch and it attaches to the hyoid bone and gets origin from the mylohyoid line of mandible and this is also supplied by mandibular nerve. That is the branch of trigeminal. Hyoglossus is a tongue muscle, so it is supplied by hypoglossal. Stylohyoid is also a suprahyoid uh, muscle, attaches from the styloid to the hyoid process and it is developmentally from the second pharyngeal arch, so it is supplied by facial nerve. So this is a chart where we can understand the nerve supply of suprahyoid and infrahyoid muscle along with their attachments. So let's see a few questions related to this topic. All are supplied by ansa cervicalis except. So except, I hope you can answer this. So except thyrohyoid, sorry thyrohyoid because 
it is uh, supplied by C1. Ansa cervicalis supplies most of the infrahyoid muscles in the neck except thyrohyoid and genohyoid uh, which are supplied by C1 branches of uh, spinal cord carried by hypoglossal nerve. C1 branches of spinal cord carried by hypoglossal nerve. Answer cervicalis supplies. So, which one would be your answer? So, we know that mylohyoid developmentally from the first pharyngeal arch. So, it is supplied by mandibular. Cricothyroid develops from the fourth pharyngeal arch. So, it is supplied by external laryngeal nerve which is a branch of uh, superior laryngeal nerve. Then uh, stylohyoid uh, already have shown it is a uh, developmentally from the second pharyngeal arch so it is supplied by facial nerve so the only exception we have is sternohyoid so sternohyoid is supplied by ansa cervicalis so this completes the ansa cervicalis along with the muscular triangle and little bit more about infrahyoid and suprahyoid muscles thank you